Making the right career choice starts in middle school, starts in high school. When I talk about career, I talk about the route you're going to take in your life, the choices you're going to make. For example, in today's times, when you're middle school and you finish middle school and you enter high school in say the United States, you can elect to get into a certain program. For example, I can elect to go into the legal magnet program. That means that I'm going to learn the basic categories of math, science, you know, and social studies and other types of things. And, but at the same time, I'm going to emphasize some legal training that's going to give me some advantage in that department. If I choose the STEM side, that is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, I'm deciding to go that route. So making that decision, understanding what you like or not like, is helpful in knowing that as early as when you're in middle school, as early as, as you begin to mature as a young person, when you are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, as you are becoming a man or a woman, as you are learning the kinds of things you like and dislike. Paying attention to those things will help you to make good decisions. And no real decision is fatal. There's no decision that you can't come back from when it comes to career and things like that. Okay, if I make a mistake in a particular area, I choose a major in college, I can switch that major. I get in high school, it's not what I want, I can make that change. But the concept is, I wanna make thoughtful decisions on what's the right thing for me to go into, what my interests are. So let's start with that. How do you make good decisions? Well, fundamentally, the first thing I want to understand is what I like. What do you like? And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is what do you like to do? Make a list. How do you like to feel? I like to be happy. I like to be relaxed. I like to be intense. I like to be... What kinds of likes do you have? I can understand what I like an area, a field, hiking, archery, sports, drama, debate. And I can say, I like drama because I like the intensity. I like, the I like to be theatrical. I like that feeling. You know, uh, I'm a sports athlete. I like the, the, the winning and the intensity. I determine what I like and I write it down. Write it down, type it out, go over it. Spend a couple of days doing it. Maybe you spend a little time doing it, then come back to it, then come back to it. And eventually you'll have this list of everything you like. Then make a list of what you don't like. I really don't like math. I really don't like science. I really don't like medicine. I really don't like this particular area. And, and, and just as you did with what you don't like, you also want to say, what kind of feelings are the worst feelings for me? Feelings of guilt, feelings of anger, feelings of embarrassment, feelings of no appreciation, feelings of animosity, guilt, wh whatever those feelings are. What don't I like? And I gotta put them down. And nobody likes anything negative. But conceptually, you understand some things that might be negative to somebody might not be negative to you. Like I might not be bothered by somebody who's giving me constructive criticism if I know they're doing it because they love me and they're showing me the good stuff first and then they're telling me, and here's what I'd suggest you do better. I, I, I don't like being criticized, but that might be productive for me. So that might not be something that is bad. I might not like being criticized in a negative way, in a mean-spirited, bitter way, but I might not mind criticism. I might not like to be embarrassed. If somebody has a problem with me, I don't believe they should air their laundry out loud. I think it should take me aside and say, here's my problem. That shows me respect. I don't find any value in humiliating me in front of other people. I think the best way to do it, if at all possible, would be to take me aside. So what you wanna learn is what you don't like. Now, when you go through this process, you will have what you like, how you like to feel, what you don't like, what you don't like to feel. The next thing is to go back to those lists and say, why? Why do I like math? Why do I like numbers? Why do I like drama? Is it just because right now it's the coolest thing in the world? Is it because there's something about that type of activity? There's something about it that I would always like. I personally like to motivate. For my entire life, I have wanted to motivate and I have motivated people and I enjoy that. I derive pleasure out of helping you. 
if you're happy, if you think I gave you something, it just means so much to me, I, I can't even describe it. Some people it doesn't do that for. For me, it's just unbelievable. Okay, so I learned that I like motivating, I like communicating, I like speaking to people and helping them, but I like the coreness of how it makes me feel and how it makes me feel about enriching you, about making you feel better. The possibility I could enrich your life. The possibility I could affect you in a positive way. So you want to go back and look at those and say, why do you like those things? Why do I like law? Why do I like drama? What's the real reason why I like it? You might find that you like it for now because there's some cool things about it. Or the teacher's great. I remember liking my psychology class in high school because the teacher was the coolest teacher in the world. And I don't know that I knew much about psychology, but he was cool. I liked my history class because the guy was the coolest guy in the world. Now, I didn't know anything about history. Now, I didn't like long for history, but I liked it. So you learn sometimes that, okay, well, do I like history because of the teacher? Or do I like history because what history is teaching me is something that really turns me on, that really gets me pumped up. It really motivates me. You see, you go through and then look at why do you like those things? As you're doing this process, you may end up saying, you know what, I don't really like that. Now that I think about it, I like it now, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna like it long term. Or uh, I have to put the I'm not sure next to that. Whatever the case may be, you do the analysis for each item that you like. Okay, why do I like feeling this certain way? Why do I like when people recognize me? Or why do I like when people appreciate me in front of other people? Or why do I like when people smile? Or why do I like when people treat me with respect? Would I prefer to be respected or liked? Would I prefer to be honored or praised? Would I prefer to be criticized or humiliated? What are the types of feelings? And understand that there are certain things that you respond better to. We all have our own value systems, the own ways that we respond to certain things. Maybe in this process, you're gonna learn that, you know what, I'm too oversensitive. Or maybe you're gonna learn that I'm too this, or I'm too that. Or I could improve the way I communicate, because I'm mean, or I'm not a good communicator. Whatever. The concept is that we're going through this process, I am refining down and getting an understanding of what drives me. Career decisions should be based on what drives you. In order to do that, you have to go through this analysis. If you go through that analysis, you will be a long way down the path of understanding the type of career, the type of things that are involved in that career that you might like doing.